I was on the forums the other day, and actually, I think it was yesterday. And a um, one of the guys, I think his name was PC Pro Mixer or something, was asking, "How do you make Reaper behave like Pro Tools?" I asked the same exact question when I first started using Reaper. I was so used to Pro Tools, I wanted to, everything to be exactly the same. I was kind of missing the point of why you should use Reaper. You make Reaper your own DAW. You're not hindered to predefined menu systems um, that Pro Tools has for you. I mean, even in Reaper, when I first started using it, it was so overwhelming because like, look at this menu when you right click. The, it's there's like insane amount of options. I mean, some people probably use all of them. I I certainly don't. I mean, this menu here is you know it's okay. I have my templates you know all here, so it makes it a little bit easier for myself. This menu down here, I never right click in this area, so that doesn't really bother me. You know, you got the ruler area. You have the track area. So anyway, let's go and look. Uh, how how do I change these menus? So we're gonna go to the options menu. We're gonna go to customize menus slash toolbars, and right here in the drop down, you have a few different options. Now, this empty TCP content that's gonna be this spot over here. See how that me menu matches up. So if you wanted to make it so that there was you know nothing there except for your insert track templates you can just click on this remove 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 and don't even need the separator remove and remove oops and remove if we click on save and right click that's all we have is insert tracks from template you could rename that. You can quickly click on rename. Say, just say new track, new tracks. Click OK. Save. New tracks. Now, if you see, I mean, I, I these are templates. These aren't. This, these don't have anything to do with the menu system. But if you see how I have this set up, I have you know a keyboard mix, which is a bus with four tracks, pops in there and has some pre put plugins on there. I'll make another tutorial on how to how to fully go through and uh, do that. You know that's the empty TCP area. Let's get rid of these so I can easily click on it. And you've got the mains uh, over here these you know few options. That's up here. That's the file what you're going to see in these menus which I wouldn't really mess with them but it's it's all your preference. You can do whatever you want. This is mixer content where you you know, all these options. Um, I haven't had a need to, to alter those because I'm usually just clicking on my actual tracks. Then we've got the import one of the really important ones, which is the ruler section, which is this up here. So let's look at that one. Ruler slash arrange content. So that is when you right click on an empty area up here which is a non media track so not this even if you click on here it'll be correct or if you click on here or up here that's that's what we're talking about here um, ruler arrange see the, for me there's way too many options I want to have it way slimmed down which as I showed you before you can go ahead and you can you know get rid of the zoom I don't care about that set selection I don't care about that. Just say you just say you didn't want to have any of this. You just want to have some simple, you know, copy and paste abilities and just, you know, get rid of these. I don't even care about that. We save this menu. We're going to right click. And it's going to be way simpler now. You know, remove selection, which your selection is this little line uh, right there, which you can also get rid of by pressing escape. You know, remove selection. Now you can paste which I didn't alter that one yet but you can paste something you can copy you know go through and look through your menu system and just find what is best for you a lot of people are going to be under the 
you know mindset that they want it to be just like Pro Tools, which is great. Find the shortcuts that you use the most. Once you find that, you can just make your own menu system. You don't need Pro Tools menu system. So, so now we can look at the media item content. That's this menu when you actually right click on this, which is a whole lot of options. You might not want all of them. You might just want, you know, some simple takes for if you're making. You know, sometimes you can make a, a menu system that's just for doing tracking, just for mixing, just for uh, editing. And if you want to set it up that way, you can. Or if you just have all-around user, you can just you know make a menu system that you're comfortable with looking at. That's as simple as it really is. I mean, you just go into here, shows you your defaults over here, so you can always click reset to get to bring it back. You don't you don't have to worry about losing the default because it will always be there. I'm gonna show you how to export your uh, menus. Once you customize your menus and everything, you can go ahead and go to export, export all menus and toolbars for Reaper, and we're gonna just name this tut4 and save now if you want to reset back to full default you can click on reset and just reset all menus to default reset all toolbars to default and if you only if you're editing one particular menu and you messed it up you can just go to reset current menu slash toolbar to default so now we're going to import let me import my studio one that I prefer to use this is the RS Pro right here. Open. So replace the current menu system. Yes. So as you see, that, that changed. It definitely edited that. So I can click on close here. And now when you see, if I right click, all it has is insert track, where all I want to see is my track templates. And I do have it shown to have the default menu there in case I need something else, which I, I would recommend that. And you can right click here, and it's uh, simpler. I also have some ways to change the grid right on uh, right on the menu. For that's that's mainly for my drum editing. And then right clicking on here, you know, first option is my takes, then grouping, then item processing, which is also scaled down, and then copy, cut, remove. You know, I would scale down to be uh, pretty basic because um, I don't want my eyes to be overwhelmed when I right click on something and see it fill up the whole screen like the options menu up here. Not that that's bad, just my my preference. That's pretty much it for the menus. I'll show you that one spot where you go to customize options, customize menus. You have to check off this up here, uh, include default menus as sub menus. I don't believe that's checked off um, as shipped, but you can just you know check it off just like that. That's it. So that's how you customize your menus in Reaper. Also, when you're going through, you can add actions that you have that you've made. If you haven't made any yet, we'll we'll make a tutorial for that too. And make some uh, basic actions, but not right now because that'll be a whole different story. So here's a custom action that I have, and if I wanted to add this to media content, select it and click select, and it's going to drop it in this menu, and then I can rename it to whatever I want. If I want to add a separator. So I can see, you know, have it sectioned out, you know, different na labels. So it's a pretty versatile system. You can make it do whatever you want. I highly recommend exploring through it. For the first month or two of me using Reaper, I used the default menus and I was, you know, a little hesitant to go forth and, you know, try doing it on my own. But once I did, I had a lot of fun doing it and made it a lot easier for myself to uh, be able to do whatever I wanted to. Until next time, uh, thanks for watching Tutorials for Reaper. This is Johnny from Red Sneaker Records.